Good evening, Mr. Sanders, Dr. Ledbetter, and members of the board. We're here tonight to talk about EIC local GPA and class rank. First, I'd like to give you an EIC local overview and what it contains. Um, it addresses these components. Um, of course, you have the policy there uh, uh, as well, but it, it, it addresses consistent implementation method of class rank. It looks at local graduation honors that are to be conferred. It looked at it looks at valedictorian and salutatorian requirements, and it also looks at tiebreakers. Um, why change the calculation methods? Uh, we we spent a, a great time in our committee. We spent you know from November to May in our uh, GPA and class rank committee talking about why we wanted to change the calculation method. Um, and what we really wanted to see happen was we wanted to allow students to pursue their passions without being negatively impact, impacted by elective courses that are weighted a 1.0. Uh, this is the Curriculum Council. And as I said before, we started um, in November of 2017. And this was a subcommittee. Um, this was a part of the Curriculum Council that really looked at class rank and GPA. We had two other subcommittees that looked at uh, grading guidelines and then one that looked at our um, uh, learner profile as well at the same time. So we were doing three different things. Um, we were, we were uh, moving and grooving through the process. These were our class rank and GPA subcommittee timeline. Uh, these were our meetings that we had. We met in November of 2017 to discuss current system for course weights, weighted GPAs and class rank, reviewed other districts practices, heard from student ambassadors about the impact of the current system. And this was extremely beneficial and powerful for the subcommittee to hear is how the students felt about the process. December of 2017, we reviewed pros and cons of current system. Committee members made proposals for changes and discussed rationale and potential impact of changes and added high school principals to the committee. We realized, we quickly realized we needed their expertise on this subcommittee. In January 2018, the curriculum department reviewed proposals and sent a summary of all the proposals to the committee members for review. In February of 2018, the committee members debated 13 possible scenarios for changes to the current EIC local and current system for class rank and GPA. Members were asked to gather feedback from teachers, parents, leaders, and they, they asked students as well in their classes, those that were uh, teachers that, that were on our subcommittee. Uh, the committee reconvened in late February to finalize recommendations. In March of 2018, we solicited we once again went back to our student ambassadors for their input on the draft proposals. And in April of 2018, we shared the final recommendation with the entire curriculum council for input and feedback. Proposed EIC local calculations. There were two major decisions by the sub subcommittee and they included what subjects are included in the calculation of weighted GPA. And so those are English, math, science, and social studies classes. And what are the weights or the multipliers for advanced honors and regular courses? And so it was decided that and take, taken to the board for uh, advanced to be a weight of 1.15, for honors to be a weight of 1.1, and for regular courses or on level courses to be a weight of 1.0. So uh, once this was approved in, by the board in May of 2018, uh, a dual system was, for calculation was in place for the class of 2021 and previous, and those are currently our rising seniors right now. And for the class of, 22, of 2022 and forward, which are rising juniors and below right now. Um, the weights for these classes that you can see uh, advanced was a in 2021 and previous was a 1.5 and for 2022 and forward it's a 1.15 for honors it was a 1.38 and now for 2022 and forward it's a 1.10 and for regular or level courses it's a 1.0 wanted to also show you the dual system for the types of courses that were taken as you can see in 2021 and previous, everything counted towards your class rank and GPA. Uh, the, the four core areas, 
languages other than English, CTE courses, fine arts courses, other electives. The only thing that didn't was not calculated in 2021 and previous were middle school courses taken for high school credit. In addition, for 2022 and forward with our, um, our new EIC, um, you can see what is calculated into class rank and GPA. It's the four core areas. It's not load, it's not CTE, it's not fine arts, it's not other electives. But if it is a core class taken in middle school, for example, algebra one, then it does count towards uh, class rank and GPA. Types of GPA. Um, there are several types and we've talked about this in previous meetings. Uh, GPA calculations follow the are, are the following weighted which follows EIC local which I just shared with you uh, four point which is a traditional college course weighting which is like 90 to 100 is 4.0 80 to 89 is a 3.0 etc unweighted is 100 is a 4.0 99 is a 3.9 98 is a 3.8 so as you can see there are several types of calculations and now I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Garakani, and he's going to talk about the validation process. Okay. Uh, hello, board. Uh, I have the validation process portion of the presentation. And so um, getting started, it's important to, to re remember that we were managing, or we are managing two different weighting systems within the software. And even prior to implementing uh, the, the new grading system, this process existed even prior to that, although it was much more simplified. So um, typically, as you know, I oversee uh, information systems in the technology department. Additionally, we have management of the PowerSchool student information system. And the, the task of addressing and ensuring that the grade points are correct for each semester average, both semester one and semester two, um, is, was usually done by an individual within the information systems department. And so this task would be to literally export all the students by grade level uh, and include essentially their academic history for all of their semester one and semester two averages. And then the, you would uh, run a calculation uh, to see if all of the GPA points associated with each grade entered for that class is in fact the correct GPA points. And if, there, if they weren't, the, uh, the, the validation process would, would show you that, and so you can make the change. As a, also a part of this uh, would be to double check to make sure that the courses that need to be included in class rank and GPA are in fact included, and those that are excluded are in fact excluded from class rank and GPA. And then we would take that data and put it back into PowerSchool, and then we would rerun the, the class rank and GPA calculations again. Um, specific to the concerns that have been expressed most recently, uh, it's really, it really boils down to uh, transcripts. Uh, once again, as Ms. Walling indicated, we have two different grading policies applied to two different groups of students. And in this case, um, you know, the, the students that now have a need for transcripts coming from sophomores that are now juniors, um, this, this request for a transcript would look very different. So the, the sample that you're looking at here is essentially the old methodology for producing a transcript for a student under the old grading scale. And this, this uh, GPA method that's referenced here is in fact the weighted GPA, and it pulls, it pulls the data uh, from the historical grades table and runs the calculations against the GPA points within the table. Um, these reports are not, uh, they're not static reports that are just stored as a PDF behind a student's record. Um, when we run this transcript, it's literally running the calculations again uh, based off of the point values for each class and producing the, the transcript. And so this would be a sample of what you would want to see if you're running the transcript for uh, classes that are less than or equal to um, 2021. So the next screen, this is what the transcript parameters would look like for classes that are 2022 and forward. And so this piece right here is, is really one I think that they caught us early on um, because we needed to communicate to the campuses that when they're producing a transcript for 11th graders, incoming rising 11th graders, that they would need to select the appropriate GPA method to ensure that the appropriate GPA calculation occurs. And that is, uh, that is a brief explanation on the validation process. In terms of next steps, 
Um, at this point, each grade level, we'll, 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 we will continue to do a grade level data export, except this time it'll be verified by curriculum technology and will involve campus counselors and PEAM staff. Historically and in the past, our power school administrator would do this, uh, you know, on their own. And uh, there's, there's many reasons why we would not want that to continue, even that process to be like that anyway. We want to involve many stakeholders to ensure that the data is, is correct. Uh, we're making changes in the courses in PowerSchool uh, that, no, that are no longer under the old grading policy. So we're at a point now where seniors, our, our rising seniors, are the, the last of the old grading system uh, cohort. And so we can now look at courses that will not be taken by those students, and we could actually code those appropriately for the new grading uh, policy. Um, and, and I really think this is key. The limitations of our software do not allow us to code a course for one grading policy, but also code a course for another grading policy that affects two different groups of students. And that's what makes this a real challenge, trying to support, uh, as Ms. Walling mentioned, the dual systems. Uh, the, the software is not designed to do that, and that's why we have to go through uh, this effort of exporting, validating, and importing the data back into the database. And then lastly, continue to build capacity in campus staff through training. As you've heard us describe, as you've heard district administration describe on numerous occasions, um, you know, our, our current student information system software, PowerSchool, uh, I believe doesn't allow us to delegate and build capacity at the campus level. There's a whole lot that has to occur at the district level. And we want our campuses to be much more self-sufficient and, and they have the knowledge. They understand these courses. They know where they need to be coded. And even though we do also appear, it really is a campus level responsibility to ensure that the, the correct GPA, GPA points are associated with the correct grades and that ultimately the final cumulative GPA is in fact the correct GPA. So we want to continue to build capacity in our staff through training and through collaboration going forward. And that concludes our presentation.